All right, so we've been looking at the B values. You know, it, it wasn't an actual number. It was, you know, it was an actual number, but it, B didn't represent anything specific. Well, now we're going to look at the number E, which is actually a specific number. And it represents the irrational number 1 plus 1 over N to the N power. And as N increases without bounds, so we can, we can go up to huge numbers. Now, the number E is approximated by 2.718282. And really, if you think about it, that's E to the 1. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go plug in our calculator, see what we get as E to the 1st. But they also want us to find E to the negative 0.05 and E to the pi. So while we're over there, we'll do all three of those. All right. So we have to find E. Well, that's going to be second ln. And if we put a 1 in here, that's our 2.718281828, and so on, okay? And so that is what e to the first was. So that was our number they were talking about. Now they wanted us to find e to the negative 0 0.05. And again, you have to use this negative down here. It's going to give you an error. And so that's going to be 0 0.95122294245. Um, that doesn't say, but let's round it to four decimals. So we want 0 0.9512, okay? Now, they also wanted e to the pi. Well, where's pi? Well, that's the second arrow. And so, you know, it looks like pi on here. If we enter that one, that's 23.14069263. To four decimal places, that's 1407. So we saw that that was the case. And this one we saw was 0 0.9512. And maybe, you know, it's approximately that. And this is approximately equal to 23.1407, I believe we rounded it to. So those would be our two values. Again, we're just using our calculator to type these in and actually calculate those values. Because what's going to happen is we're going to start using things where we have e to some value. And so we have to know how to use that e function. And this is because we're going to use continuous growth or continuously compounding interest. We're going to use those E functions now instead of a B function. Now, with continuous growth, we use uh, models that use E as the base uh, are the continuous growth or continuous decay, depending on what our A is. Now, what's going to be is we have a continuous growth slash decay, again, based on, on what that A is or, or um, what that is. So if we have a uh, one way, we're going to have a, um, a certain value. But guess what? When we have with E's, we're going to actually start looking at the R's. So for all real numbers T and all real positive numbers A, so we're only going to worry about those A's that are positive. But what happens is that R is going to now come into play. And so A, again, is their initial value. So if we added $100,000 into something, that would be our A. Then we're going to raise that E to the R, which is going to be our rate, times our time. So R is the continuous growth rate per unit time. And again, you need it as a decimal if it's a percent initially. And T is the elapsed time. Now, if R is greater than 0, then the formula, formula represents growth. And if R is less than 0, it represents decay. Now, if you've been in business or any business classes, you know compounding interest continuously is going to be A equals PERT, P-E to the R-T. So if you remember PERT, you'll know continuously compounding. Okay. P is our principal, R is our uh, interest rate as a decimal, and T is the time we're investing it. Okay. So let's do some examples here. Person invests $100,000 at a nominal 12% interest rate per year compounded continuously. What will be the value of the investment in 30 years? Well, remember, we just said A of T is equal to PERT, P E to the R T. Well, this is our P. R is equal to 0 0.12. And T is equal to 30. So A of 30 equals $100,000 times well, and we don't need the parentheses like that. We're going to just put E. So we're going to have 100,000 E to the R, 0 0.12 times 30. Okay. Now, if we plug into the calculator that value, let's clear that so we can get it at the top. We'll have 100,000 E second LN to the R, 0 0.12 
times, our length of time was 30. And with, with these calculators, we don't have to put parentheses up there. But if we were going to do anything else after that, we have to remember to arrow down so we were actually down below, not up there still in the exponent. And and you'll you'll do it, and I'll do it, and you'll notice it after a while. Huh, that looks weird. And then you'll see what you've done. And so that's going to be what we get here. Now, again, once we're doing these, we're actually going to have to use to the nearest penny. And so that's going to give us 36598238. Okay, make sure I wrote that down right. 36598238.44. All right. So that's what it is. So $100,000 at 12% over 30 years gives us, you know, almost $4 million. So that's that's pretty good for compounding continuously. Now, that was going with a positive growth. Now we're going to look at uh, our, yeah, positive growth. So we're going to have positive number. Now we're going to look at decay. So it says rate on 222 decays at a continuous rate of this. Well, if we have a continuous rate of decay, that means that this is a negative 0 0.173, and that's going to be our R. And so how much will 100 grams? Well, that's our initial value. That's going to be our, you know, if we looked at it as the principal, it would be P. But if we looked at it as this, that's going to be our A. Okay, so, you know, sometimes we're looking at A, sometimes with P's of rate on decay in a year okay well notice this is per day so the year we're going to have to use 365 days okay so what we're going to do is we're going to try to write it into a formula we'll have a of well we want 365 so that's going to be equal to that now what was our little a value our little a was 100 times e to the r, well r this time is a negative 0 0.173, times t, which was 365. And maybe I'll write it with parentheses here, but when we get to the other side, we don't actually have to write it as parentheses. Okay, so now we plug that in. So let's clear that out. Now our a was 100, and then times e to the negative 0.173 times 365. And so we get 3.771 times 10 to the negative 26. All right, so that equals 3.771 times 10 to the negative 26. And how much milligrams, okay? Well, 10 to the 26, that's going to be 26 zeros. We're going, to, we're going to go out here 26 decimal places that way. Well, that is pretty close to zero milligrams. And so I'm going to say, you know, if you get something really small like 10 to the negative 26, that's going to be a very, very small number. Like I said, there's going to be 25 zeros in front of that three and or 26 decimal places now. And so that's going to be a very small number. And so we're going to have zero milligrams of radon 222 and you know decaying at a rate of 0.173 percent per day going down with we starting at 100 milligrams okay so after a year it's gone all right let's stop there and we'll come back for more